Hello everyone, Seraphic Angelic here. I'm trying something new, which I'm going to call scripted gameplay, and it's exactly what it sounds like. I'm going to record some gameplay in advance and add some commentary over it with minimal to no editing. We're playing Marvel Nemesis Rise of the Imperfects today, and I want to tell you about the game, because to me, it's a trip down memory lane. I hope you do forgive me because I write so much faster than I can make videos. Back when I tried writing stories, a thousand words was nothing, maybe an hour's worth of writing. But in terms of video, 1,000 words is about 10 minutes, which is a lot of time. By the way, what will happen for all these videos is I will also upload a no commentary version, and the link will be in the description, which I won't publish to your subscription feed, but it will still be in my uploads, just in case you don't want to hear my commentary or you just want the raw gameplay. Everything is Creative Commons Zero because for the first time, I'm recording my own gameplay for these videos, meaning you can reuse the whole playthrough in whatever you want. So let's talk about Marvel Nemesis. I remember playing this so many years ago on my Xbox with my older brother and he'd always thrash me in the PvP and I still have the game disc upstairs. In many ways, I think Marvel Nemesis is a very unbalanced game. The controls feel awkward and unresponsive, and as many others said at the time, some of the characters were ridiculously weak, with others being overpowered. But still, I really love this game. I always had this fascination with the game, that idea that you could corrupt someone and turn them into an alien, dark version of themselves was just so awesome. Was it because you were a submissive male? Yeah, probably. <laughs> because it was, it was that idea that someone might care about you enough to want you on their si side, to want to corrupt you. And I don't think that desire is just for submissives, but something shared by all people. Because everyone wants someone else to care for them. Also, the designs for the Wink and Electra were just so sexy. They were sexy, beautiful, strong characters who, could, who would completely wipe the floor with you. Also, there's the fact that I was, and still am, terrible at this game. And their portraits were just so stunning, especially Electra and the Wink. I don't mean that in any disrespectful way, but that I fell in love with them. I think they're sexually attractive, and there's nothing wrong with that. I also think they're strong, independent characters, but more on that later. The art and the menus are just so well done, and look exactly like they're straight out of a comic book, which is not a coincidence because they made a comic book series out of this, even though it was cancelled after six issues due to bad sales of the game. More than that, this game brought to life such a huge cast of some of my favourite characters from comic books in such a unique setting. For instance, the starting cinematic where the Hulk, the Punisher and Captain America are all killed almost within seconds of the alien menace appearing, now that is pretty epic. Seeing Captain America's embedded shield embedded in a pillar and that realization that here superheroes that you think of as effectively immortal to be dead so easily is a shock. But I think uh, this real this system shock frames the introduction of this game so perfectly. So when I saw I had a chance to play this again on Dolphin and Emulator in 4K, I wanted to relive that experience. Because of that, the cutscenes are pretty scr scrambled, so I hope you'll excuse me there. The music, the voice acting, and the, the graphics, they're all decent. Everything about this game isn't too bad. Even now, I would say it's acceptable, especially with the revamped 4K graphics yes, of the Dolphin the emulator. That no is everything destroyed. except for the combat system. So let's talk about the mechanics in the game. And I'll tell you, it's broken. The combat system is completely broken. It's actually more effective to throw cars and objects at enemies than fight them properly. So because if you manage to hit an enemy with a car, you'll take out a quarter of their health in one hit, and sometimes more if the vehicle explodes. Furthermore, amongst the characters, there's a pretty clear power imbalance. 
Some characters like Wolverine are really weak. He has almost no health, can't lift anything heavier than a mailbox, which means he can't block anything heavier than a mailbox either, except with a special block, and or a super block, and his ability to passively recover health is laughable. He can't web swing, he can't fire projectiles, he can't fly, he can't teleport, he can't use a ranged grab attack. In almost every area, his capabilities are limited, and all of this makes his story missions excruciatingly painful. I'm not saying if you really forced yourself, you couldn't play him, because I'm sure there's someone out there who has mastered him to the level that he could take on anyone. Supposedly from Adam Hollow Zack's guide, he does, really, he does heavy damage really quick and is a really good air juggler slash grappler. But from my experience, he was really difficult to play, getting crushed by almost every other character. I will admit that I didn't put in the time to try and master each of the characters, so that could be it as well. And then there's characters like The Thing, whose standard attack does something like one tenth of an enemy's health bar and knocks them back, not knocks them about the place. He can also throw every throwable item in the game, which makes every fight a breeze when you pick up a car and hurl it at your enemy. Or worse, Iron Man, Storm, or Johnny Ohm, who can and do spam projectile attacks which are really difficult to dodge, leaving you feeling cheated when you just die. However, when you play as these characters, it's the opposite story. You feel like a god, destroying your enemies with ease. And I'm just going to read you this comment from Wikipedia to explain how broken Marvel Nemesis is. Many complaints about the game revolved around the fact that AI opponents would chain abuse projectile special moves, dealing significant damage to a player character, with the AI character immediately triggering the fatality upon dropping the player to low health. Which brings up an interesting question of realism, because although most fighting games aren't like this, superheroes aren't balanced in their capabilities at all. If the thing went head to head with Elektra, it would make sense that she lost in a straight up fight, or if Storm went up against Daredevil, she could go all out and immediately fry him. There's no reason that she couldn't just spam lightning bolts at him until he was very he was very dead if she was serious about fighting him. And I saw this post on Reddit by 140 years, which sums up this idea quite handily. I love that it was so unbalanced. I saw an interview where one of the designers said something like, the other fighting games have characters who are all on the same level. If someone isn't strong, they're fast, so it evens out. In this game, if you're Electra trying to beat Iron Man, you're gonna have a really difficult time. Which is so true, because that's Marvel in perfect strength, that you can play the game and feel so empowered, absolutely conquering foes if you have an OP character. But if you're weak as, um, if you're a weak as character, it can feel so frustrating, especially for the compulsory story missions where your character is killed, just killed again and again by the foes in missions where the difficulty seems to just spike up for two or three characters. Then again, the weak characters in the game make the stronger characters seem that much stronger. In fact, this game seems to scream the opposite of balance. If you're losing, it pushes you to lose even faster. You can see this from the rage system, where you build up your rage meter when you hit an enemy, and once it's full, your special meter becomes unlimited for a short time. So, if you're being pummeled, or you're pummeling an enemy, you gain a massive advantage, if you're already winning. There's also the ground stomp system, and you're on the ground already, after having gone through a brutal beating, and the game's like, well, there's a specific ag attack against enemies on the ground to curb stomp them to add even more insult to injury. Admittedly, the game does try to balance this out by allowing you to uppercut an enemy if you're on the ground, so it's not a good idea to be around an enemy who is on the ground, but it doesn't just apply to your basic attack. If you're on the ground and an enemy throws a car at you, there's literally no way to block it. If they time it right, so 
sometimes you, you can have no ch choice but to be hit by a car or a thrown object whilst on the ground. There's also a fatality system. So there's two health bars in Marvel Nemesis. One which is a permanent health bar which takes less damage and one that recovers but can only recover up to a maximum of the permanent health bar. So when the health bar, which can recover, reaches a certain threshold, the word danger will appear. And this means your character or the enemy character can be executed in an instant kill. If you press the special and grapple uh, button on an enemy who has reached the danger threshold, it kills the character instantly in a pretty cool cutscene. Nothing too gory like Mortal Kombat, but it illustrates what makes each character unique. This means that in theory you only need to lose or take a couple of hits before an opponent can execute you, speeding up the battle by a lot. In practice it is very hard to execute another character as the finisher is really fiddly. Sometimes you end up using a super grab on them instead of executing them, even though you swear you did the right thing when they were in the danger zone. Also, a lot of the time they'll be on the ground, and by the time they get up again, their health bar will have recovered so much so that you can't that you won't be able to do the execution. To be honest, I think because I'm really bad at the game, I spend so much more time trying to use a finisher than actually finishing the battle. This isn't the case for the AIs though, who seem to be a whole lot more proficient at the game, who seem to have no trouble executing you if you're next to them and are in the danger zone. They just take advantage of it immediately and you'll be dead instantly. So Marvel Nemesis penalizes you pretty heavy for lo heavily for losing instead of trying to balance things in your favor, which I find a lot of other games try to do such as Injustice and Dragon Ball Z Shin Budokai for the PSP. What do I think about that? Well, I don't think that's necessarily bad. It can be punishing at times and feel quite grueling, especially when you're just starting to learn the game, but it encourages you, encourages you to be always on the to always be on the offensive, to reap the benefits of being in a better position. Some other mechanics which I uh, also, for the curb stomp, it makes sense that you would curb stomp your enemy if they're on the ground, you, like in a real fight. Some other mechanics which I also thought are pretty broken are if you try to throw an object that you can't pick up, your character will go through a useless two second animation of them trying to pick up the item but failing, pausing you in place, as if the game itself is laughing at you saying that you should have known better and penalizing you for it by making you vulnerable to thrown objects or attacks in that time. Furthermore, the ring out system. So if you knock out an enemy out of the ring, and you can actually do this by grappling your enemy, and as long as they fall first, while you're both falling into the, out of the ring, you win. It's very cheap because it ignores whatever amount of health you have and kills you instantly. Then again, I found that this wasn't a huge problem for human players, because you can just le lead the battle away from the edge, and you'll be fine. I think this mostly applied to AI characters who couldn't fly, where you could just juggle them off the edge as an easier winning strategy. As a counterpoint, I did like how the game showed you the impact of each blow, or being thrown against a wall. I think it was a nice design, design choice to pause the gameplay and show you being smashed against the wall. Because the impact of a player doesn't actually hit a player unless you show it to them. And I think emphasis is a good way of doing that. Now let me tell you why I think I fell in love with The Wink the most. Because of this one mission in Wolverine's storyline called Femme Fatale. Oh gosh, like this mission. I, can, I can't tell you how many times I died replaying this. Let me show you just how many times I died.
would just die and die and die so many times. The fact is that the Wink is just a better character. Even if you use basic attacks and grabs at the same rate at the, that the Wink does, the fact is you'll lose if the Wink uses her special because straight up she attacks faster. She had one of the most annoying special attacks, so if you were on the ground, she would stab you once and retreat, meaning you couldn't land an uppercut on her to penalize her for hitting you whilst you were on the ground. Furthermore, her mobility is leagues ahead of Wolverine's. She can teleport to dodge and to block and evade, and one of her specials catapults her across the map, meaning that she's faster than you in about every way. As a character, she also has an interesting backstory, being scarred and spurned by society. She's sexy as hell and she's a really strong character and played well. Did I mention she has the sexiest fatality as well? At least you can say you came in a strong second. I mean, just look at her execution. It's so slick and beautiful, and that's what I saw again and again as I was bu brutally slaughtered. Playing this mission just me. meant just now being executed again and again whenever you reach the danger level, watching her shred Wolverine and being helpless to stop her. How I finally ended up defeating her after losing something like 15 times in a row was run away from her, not even trying to fight her normally and just using grab attacks to take the least amount of damage possible. And I can't tell you how happy I was when I finished that one mission, which had been holding me down for so long. And afterwards, I went straight to the versus mode and played as her, feeling so epic as I devastated foes the same way she shredded my Wolverine. And to be honest, does her character take a lot of skill to master? Not really. It's pretty easy to play as her because it's mainly focused around spamming a special plus basic attack and she can destroy her uh, foes pretty easily with that. All of that together is why she is my favorite character. I may or may not make another episode on all of the Wink's uh, moves and how to master her character, even though I haven't personally mastered her yet. Counterintuitively, it's because she was the most annoying supervillain boss fight in the game that I love her so much. As a side note, there were some complaints about the Imperfects, the supervillains, that were made just for this game, but I thought that they were all very well done. They're really fun, dark and distorted versions of other superheroes, and have enough of a uniqueness to each of them that they inhabit their own personalities. For example, Brigade, who's the result of an entire brigade of soldiers mixing in together into one body who has a really strong projectile attack. However, because of his conflicting personalities, he sometimes pauses in battle, holding his head and fighting his inner personalities. And I thought that was, uh, that his story and his, the idea that came together for him is really interesting. Hazmat, uh, who has th this really cool take on Spider-Man, where he shoots out poison instead of web projectiles, and Solara, who has this really unique finisher where she blows what seems like a kiss of death, burning an enemy to ash from the inside out. There's also Johnny Ohm, who has a, such a unique and recognizable personality and is really cheap in gameplay because his shock projectile can be spammed and does a lot of damage, and if he's in rage mode, you're practically dead. And as I've covered, I really love Vinny because she's such a sexy character, so full of intrigue, which is why I really like the uh, cast of new characters that they brought in. And I think they're really original. Now you see me. The only exception to this now is Fault Zone, whose story about being a ballerina to become uh, to becoming an earthquake machine thing seemed a bit far-fetched to me. I have no problems with her gameplay. She was a really powerful character and it's just the idea that she would somehow think that turning her legs into a earthquake machines would help her dance doesn't seem too realistic. Also props to Alien Electra who has the best alien skin in my opinion. Just look at how amazing it looks and her execution is so cool.
really disappoint me. Like, that is, that's just really badass. One more gripe with Marvel Nemesis, which is some of the story missions felt nigh impossible. A really frustrating mission was on top of the world in Electra's missions, because you kept falling to your death on this one section. I can't tell you how many times I failed this mission, because you can't simply wall run over this gap. And you have to jump at the wall before you start the wall run, which the game doesn't tell you at all. Also, the controls in Marvel Nemesis aren't the most responsive, and I was playing with a keyboard, although I should use control. Some of Daredevil and Venom's story missions were also annoying too, but yeah. Despite all its flaws, I still really like Marvel Nemesis. I think it's a pity that it never got a sequel due to bad sales, but even then, it represents such a nice memory to me. It represents my childhood. And that's about it. An announcement? We broke 42 subscribers about two weeks ago, which is incomprehensible. I never thought that something I made would have any value to anyone. It never crossed my mind. But I like doing this. So I really want to thank you so much for listening. And I don't care how many subscribers I have in the end. What's more important is that you enjoy. I like watching videos, and more than anything else, I want to make something that someone else would like to watch. You are the lifeblood that courses through my veins. You are what keeps me working, and I'll never forget that. Seraphic Angelic, out.